Good morning. You're very welcome to our service of recorded worship here in St. Lawrence's in Chapel, is it? For this great festival of Pentecost, the celebration of the coming of the Holy Spirit on the disciples in Jerusalem. And I'm sorry that you're unable to join us in for in-person worship. Maybe you will be able to over the next few weeks, but it's lovely that you're able to join worship this way. And as with last week, I will intersperse between the stuff that I'm recording, I'm recording now for Pentecost with a previous service of morning prayer recorded here in St. Lawrence's, just to work out uh, the balance of work as we go back into in-person worship and some of the other activities of parish life returning for me. I pray that whatever this day and this week is holding for you, that you may know God's presence, God's spirit and God's hope with you. I'm going to continue with the Easter greeting. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Beloved in Christ, we come together to offer to Almighty God our worship and praise and thanksgiving, to confess our sins and to receive God's forgiveness, to hear his holy word proclaimed, to bring before him our needs and the needs of the world, and to pray that in the power of his spirit we may serve him and know the greatness of his love. We take a moment of quiet as we acknowledge our need of God and his forgiveness. Let us confess our sins to God our Father.
We pray together. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, by what we have done and by what we have failed to do. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth will proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord, praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Let's praise God in our next hymn before we have our Bible reading.
The collect for today, Pentecost Sunday. Almighty God, who on the day of Pentecost sent your Holy Spirit to the apostles with the wind from heaven and in tongues of flame, filling them with joy and boldness to preach the gospel. By the power of the same Spirit, strengthen us to witness to your truth and to draw everyone to the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first Bible reading today is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pygeria and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you. And listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I shall show portents of the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. And the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In our Gospel reading today, we continue to read through parts of the chapters of John from the upper room, Jesus with the disciples on the night before he died. Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 15, verses 26 to 27, and chapter 16, verses 4 to 15. Jesus says, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, 
because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent you. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? Because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they did not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer. About judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of Truth comes, he will guide you to all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and thank you for the opportunity to celebrate and reflect on it. And help us to learn even today more of what it means to celebrate Pentecost. In Jesus' name, Amen. Can you imagine those first disciples? They've been through the trauma of Holy Week, and there's no other word for it but trauma. They've been through the uncertainty of the early days after Easter Sunday and Jesus' resurrection, coming to believe that, yes, he really has risen from the dead, and he has ascended into heaven, he's gone and left them, and he's told them to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. But they are still in a city that put Jesus to death. And I'm sure there's been massive rumours, I'm sure there's big lots amounts of uncertainty, but actually still they are followers of a leader who has been condemned to crucifixion. And so as we get several times through these weeks, we get this sense of the disciples being locked away for fear of the Jews, to use the quote. And they're living in fear. They're living in uncertainty. They're living not quite sure what's going to happen or what this all means. And then suddenly, well, Pentecost happens. And poor St. John, or St. John, trying to describe what's going on. Sorry, no, not St. John. I'm getting my, my Bible readings mixed up. St. Luke in Acts the Acts reading, trying desperately to decide, to describe what has happened. And he says something like a mighty wind, something like tongues of fire, something like... And he just, he, he's a very educated man, his Greek is excellent, he's a medical doctor. But he cannot quite put the terms on what happened that day in the upper room in Jerusalem on the first Pentecost day. But something happened that totally transformed this group of people. Because let me tell you, even though they had interacted with the risen Jesus, even though they had come to believe that he had risen from the dead and that they had a tremendous story to tell, they were still hidden away. They were still concerned, they were still afraid, they were still in trouble. But suddenly, 
Whatever it is that happened on Pentecost morning and bang, they're out in the streets. Bang, they're out having big crowds and rallies and gatherings and, and the next few chapters in John's, in Acts of the Apostles is just full of drama and excitement and, and buzz. If you've ever been at a, the beginning of a movement, you'll ex understand this, the excitement. It's like being in love, that wonderful buzz of excitement that totally transforms this group of disciples who only the day before are locked away, hidden in fear. For some of us, we've been hidden and locked away in fear for most of the past year and a bit. For some of us, we're beginning to be able to get out and about, but for some of us, we're not. For some of us, all that has happened in the HSE with the IT hassles has meant dreadful things for you or for your loved ones. And there is this overwhelming sense of uncertainty and disease, dis-ease and fear. And it can be very easy that you are, like the disciples were, locked away in fear. Can I say in all honesty, I don't want to take the parallel too far because the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit on us as Jesus followers, this Pentecost does not mean that we are safe from COVID or that we are safe from all the other problems of life. But it does mean something powerful. It does mean something dramatic changes. Because the experience of being isolated, locked away, uncertain and fearful is a really difficult experience. And it brings with it, it becomes because of this sense of deep powerlessness. What can I do about and you can dot, fill in the dots yourself as to what it is that may bring that sense of powerlessness and fear into your life, into your situation. We know what it was for the first disciples. The coming of the Holy Spirit and all its drama that poor St. Luke can't quite describe. In all the excitement of the building of the early community, of people's lives being transformed in the days and weeks and months after Pentecost, they all come because the Holy Spirit brings that personal experience of God. We talk about Jesus as God with us, Emmanuel. And in many ways, the Holy Spirit continues that work of Jesus, God within us wherever we are. Jesus is a physical human being, could only be in one place and at what time. God the Holy Spirit is not restricted by space or time. God the Holy Spirit is with you right now. God the Holy Spirit is in you right now. And what is the Holy Spirit's role? What is the Holy Spirit to do? We hear some of it in the quote that the Apostle Peter uses from the book of Joel, the prophet Joel, from what we call the Old Testament. And it is full of this excitement of dreams and visions, of hope, of excitement. And we see that being enacted in those early weeks of after Pentecost in the Acts of the Apostles. But in our Gospel reading, we see a deeper understanding of what Jesus is telling them and us that the Holy Spirit will do. There are two titles that Jesus gives him in this passage. One is the Advocate and the other is the Spirit of Truth. What is an Advocate? It's the, the word used here is the legal word. For somebody who stands alongside you in a court of law, someone who is pleading your case, your cause. 
and this sense that God the Holy Spirit in you is on your side. He's fighting for you. He's fighting to get you through whatever life throws at you. He's fighting for you in a spiritual sense, but also in every part of who you are, to build you up and strengthen you, to give you that sense of the experiencing of God's love that I spoke about last week, that sense of God's community that I spoke of last week, that God invites us into as we follow him. So firstly, the Holy Spirit Jesus talks about as being an advocate who is alongside us to help us particularly in difficult times. And secondly, the spirit of truth. Last week we talked about the word, that Jesus came to bring the word, God's word, and that God's word forms and shapes how we look at the world, how we see God, how we see ourselves, how we interact with the world around us. And the part of the work of God, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, is to take God's word and to remind us of it, to teach us of it, to bring it to mind, to heart, to help us as we, in our context, read God's word or hear God's word, to take it and make it real to us. So by that, by the work of the Holy Spirit, God is speaking into our hearts and into our lives. And what is God going to be speaking into our hearts and into our lives? Jesus says this, number one, he is guiding us into truth. Into how we can see the world. How we can look at all that is happening to us individually, as families, as a nation, as our world. So we look at it not just with the eyes of an isolated person who feels powerless but with the eyes of faith, beginning to look at things in God's way, thinking not just of our resources and how we might deal with situations, but knowing that we are part of God's resources, that God is with us in all of these things, that we are not alone, that you are not alone. That God is in you. And that as you ask God for wisdom, for strength, for the truth of a situation, God is hearing, God is listening, God is guiding. God the Holy Spirit poured so dramatically out on those confused, uncertain, often ill-equipped first disciples blasted them out into the known world. And through them and the people they told and the people they told and the people they told, our world was turned upside down. So that even today we know of God. We know of God's love. We know of God's power. And even today, we can experience God's Spirit, just as Joel spoke about, bringing that sense of excitement and hope and joy, but also making real to us who God is and the love God has for you and for me. In a moment, we're going to share a lovely, beautiful modern hymn You'll get the name of it right. Be still, for the presence of the Lord is here with us. Not just me here in church, but you wherever you may be. God is with you. God is your advocate. God is your guide. God the Holy Spirit will lead you into truth. So as you sit, as you sing, as you pray this song, just allow God the Holy Spirit to speak deep into your heart 
the word of truth for you today. Amen. Let us pray. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. O Lord, guide and defend our rulers, and grant our government wisdom. Let your ministers be clothed with righteousness, and let your servants shout for joy. O Lord, save your people, and bless those whom you have chosen. Give peace in our time, O Lord, and let your glory be over all the earth. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and renew us by your Holy Spirit. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for bringing us safely to this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. And in all things, guide us to know and do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go before us, Lord, in all our doings, with your most gracious favour. And further us with your continual help, that in all our works, begun continued and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name and finally by your mercy 
attain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> we continue in prayer. Let us pray. We pray for a fresh infilling of your life and power, O oh God, to each person, each family, and each church community who worship on this special day. Fill each with your power, set us on fire with your love, and guide us into your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, will you give us grace to look at our world and our own lives, seeing them with your eyes, knowing them with your power, feeling for them with your love, that we may see the world, its needs and its problems through the eyes of love and hope, justice and mercy for grace to abandon uncertainty and prejudice, to build bridges of reconciliation, and to lay ourselves down in care and service of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, by your Holy Spirit, will you pour your loving kindness into our homes and our families, into our places of work and education. For all those who are travelling at this time, for those reunions and reconciliations and first meetings, will you pour your spirit of hope and joy to each one? Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. In a moment of quiet, we bring our own, we, sorry, we name before God those known to us who need his healing and his peace this day. Lord God, we pray by your Holy Spirit that you would pour your healing and peace on all who are sick at this time whether in hospital, or at home, or in a care setting. We pray for those who are with them, for those who have their medical and physical care, and for those who are separated from them. We pray for courage, and patience, and hope, and for moments of joy. We pray for those who are very ill, we pray too particularly for anyone whose treatment has been affected by the, all the uncertainties of these days. And we pray for those who live with loss and bereavement. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a time of quiet, we bring our own particular prayers and concerns before God. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, as we go from this time of worship, let us not go from your presence. But whatever this day and this week holds for us, may we know your love and your word and your community in our hearts and lives. May we know your spirit as our advocate and our guide through all the decisions made to be made in these days. And we conclude our prayers by praying together the grace. 
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Lovely to have you share in our service of worship this morning. I pray that whatever this week holds for you, you will know God's presence with you. God bless you. Whether you stay or whether you go, may you go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>